Hi there, welcome my friend, welcome to Home Keepers. Grab a cup of tea and join us for the next few minutes. And whether you've been with us for many years or if you're brand new, maybe this is the first time you've stopped on this program, you are so welcome. Come right on in, got a chair right here for you. And I hope you'll stay with us for the whole program and that you will uh, visit us again if this is your very first time. We try to deal with those things that affect the home. And uh, most things in life do affect the home. So uh, we're going to keep going as long as the Lord permits and as long as you are there for us. I have a wonderful guest today. Um, how could you not love somebody who was in education most of their lives, starting out teaching and in, ends up being principal and administrator and all that? And also his wife, Gloria, is a teacher, a retired teacher also. And I'm talking about the author of this book, John W. Abel. And the name of the book is Sacrifice, The Essence of Life. And as I got a hold of this, I thought, you know, there's a lot of people who sacrifice around the world. I'm not putting that down at all. But we've got a culture that is kind of narcissistic and um, me, 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 and um, don't offend me and be politically correct and all. And sacrifice isn't usually the top of the list. So I think this is a book that is very, very much needed right now. Uh, in the way that our culture is moving along, and I'm glad that he wrote it, and we'll be glad to talk about it and uh, let you know a little bit more of what's in it. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make something that's really for special occasions, and I've never made one before, but it's a red velvet cake, so I can see Valentine's Day or Christmas or a special birthday, because you can put any color of icing on it you want, we're going to put that together for you. Uh, but first, I want to offer you a book by um, one of my dear, dear friends, uh, Pastor Dave Williams, The Miracle of Faith Goals. Now, a lot of times you think of uh, faith and miracles and so forth as, uh, you know, something the preachers do and the preachers talk about. But these things are for you in your everyday life, and you can believe God for the smallest thing or the biggest thing. So don't sell yourself short on, on stepping into God's plan and what he can do for you. I want you to have this book, and we'll send it to you for that gift of $15. That includes uh, shipping and handling and everything. And I think it would give you a giant step forward in your Christian walk, and most of us could use that. If you want it, uh, and you use a credit card, call 1-800-229-0059 or... Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and we will get it out to you. I think a lot of pastors would probably like this book, so it's a real bargain. I hope you'll take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And how are you today? I am fabulous. How are you? This girl is, she's getting so famous. Oh, I'm so famous. So <laughs> glad to, and I'm going to tell you something. Last time, mm -hmm. last time we um, produced a program was her birthday. Mm -hmm. And she said she's going to Bahama Breeze, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You should send us a donation for that. Yeah. You know, that little Bahama advertisement. Breeze. So I said, what did you get? What did you <laughs> order? She ordered black bean soup. <laughs> well, you have to say, you have to know, I start off with chips and salsa. And by the time I'm done with chips and salsa, I'm done. I'm full. So I just got a little soup so, so I maybe could eat with everyone else. Your meal was about three bucks, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Most, yeah. <laughs> but I guess your husband ordered a steak and you tasted it. He did, it. and it was delicious. Well, uh, we've talked about her newfound frugality and mm -hmm. in her finances and all. And I thought, that's taken a little bit well, far. Well, the only reason we went to Bahama Breeze was because I had gift cards oh. that I had gotten for Christmas. That's what determines where we go Or a coupon. Eat. Yeah. <coughs> okay. We have a red velvet cake here. Mm -hmm. But I'm, uh, Susan says best to put all the uh, wet stuff in. Okay. So <laughs> you have a two-thirds a cup of oil. You mm -hmm. have four eggs. Mm -hmm. You have a cup of sour cream. Yes. I need something to little spatula action I always, uh, I always figure out that if something has sour cream in it's going to be good. Well, it's going to sure. be moist. Mm -hmm. So this is 
this is a lot of liquid, and yeah. this is uh, milk. Yep, a half a cup of uh, milk or buttermilk. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you have two better. teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, That's what, and then you have the cake mix. Oh, and you have um, pudding mix that you're mm -hmm. going to put in there. Yeah, also. I'm going to mix this up a little okay. bit first. Yep, and she's going to mix together the the glaze. The glaze. We have two glazes. I'm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh come on. Okay, what happened? Oh, there, there we go. go. There okay. we go. You're starting All right. Now you want to start putting your stuff okay. together. Okay. Yes, I have um, a, a cup and a half of powdered sugar. The first one's going to be chocolate, and I have uh, three quarter cups of cocoa. I have three tablespoons of, butter, of melted butter, and I have some milk that I'm going to put in here. So we're just going to mix this all together. <coughs> That'll be the chocolate <laughs> glaze. <laughs> And I'll, I just want you to know the scarf I have on mm -hmm. is another one of my birthday presents that we were talking about on Monday from our, at the last show from Melody, my my friend Melody, and I love it. And let's tell them who Melody is again Melody because is this is a my husband's former wife. Yeah, and this is but one of my the way greatest Christians and are dearest supposed to behave. Friends. Yes, one best friends and mm -hmm. uh oh, and only uh oh. Uh -oh. Only the Lord can do that. That's for sure. I give him all the credit mm -hmm. and all the glory for that. I'm not sure this is the way to do it, but. <laughs> Will you, you squeeze it? that in there? Yes. Because I don't want to let go of this. Well, let's take it out. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. See, that was really hard. There we okay. go. You're probably going to have to pump up the volume there. Yeah. But we've got <laughs> one already baked that she's going to show you yeah. how to. Let me get the chocolate mixed up here real quick. Oh, this is going to be so moist because it's got pudding on yes, it. Yes, it has sour cream sour and milk and butter. I mean, eggs. you can't go wrong. Okay, that's the chocolate one. Make sure I get down in there. And then the vanilla one is just powdered sugar, and milk, and butter. Mm hmm. And like I said, this is for a special occasion and just have a real small slice. Yeah, uh, it's all about uh, proportions and you can enjoy things, you just don't need a lot of it. Mm hmm. And once in a while. Look how beautiful that yeah, is. Yeah, that is oh. gorgeous. Now, this is the one. <gasps> yes, do you remember? That has been baked and. Um, it has that wonderful bunt pan that Mr. Keith sent us. Yes, we tried to make monkey bread in that bunt pan and it did not work. This, because of this worked yeah. wonderfully. It would it would have worked in here better. So yes. that's why we're Did you spray the shit? Oh, uh -oh. look at that. Yeah. Oh, fire me earthling. Um, Just fire me. But I remember when my mom passed away and everybody was coming to the house, I I took that pan home and made a chocolate cake and sifted white uh, or powdered sugar on yes. it. Yes. It looked like <gasps> Pike's Peak. I love it. I'm from Colorado, so, so if anybody that's knows your, that, uh, yeah. you know what Pike's Peak is. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this in a baggie. You'll wanna scrape the bowl, but I'm just gonna do this so we... Yeah, and I'm not gonna lick it. I'll do that after okay. the show. <laughs> So you just, we'll uh, just leave it there. Cut the corner of the baggie off, and then you just drizzle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the chocolate. Oh my goodness, uh -huh. that's what I'm talking about, <gasps> right? Oh, this might even end up looking like the picture. That doesn't happen. Okay, we all gotta the time. get a little chocolate on yep. there now. Oh, that is. It is looking like the picture. I know. We're always very proud of ourselves when yes, that happens. Because it doesn't always <laughs> happen. It doesn't happen very often. No, this looks so Okay, how long delicious. do you think it'll be after this show is over that all the crew from back there will be here? Less than a few minutes. Our director, our audio guy. Oh my. Oh my is Look right. Look how easy that was too. Yes. And you let it sit a little bit. Probably. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I what? don't know. Would it be a good idea to put it in the fridge just for a couple minutes? Oh, maybe? you could, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try it? You have a plate and a fork. Oh, why not? Yeah. I think she wanted to oh. try it because we got two forks here. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Possibly. Hey, I don't do this for nothing, you know. 
There. Oh, that's that. beautiful. And that's a great there that's a great slice right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. And you don't need to taste it. You know it's good. Oh yeah. Mm. If you want this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. And we'll make sure that you have it. It's that perfect thing for um special occasion. Mm -hmm. What about a little green frosting in there at nice. Christmas time? Yes. That would be great. Stay with me, I want you to meet my guest, John Abel. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Welcome, John, to Home Keepers. So glad to have you here. Thank <coughs> you so much. And what a wonderful, wonderful topic. Uh, just to write a book on sacrifice and how you pull together lots of people who've sacrificed. And uh, I'm sure that was no problem, finding, finding the folks. You just kind of had to Yes, there's, there's a, an abundant amount of <laughs> sources out there to get. Well, well, what was it that prompted you to write <coughs> a book on this subject? Well, um, <laughs> I'll try to make it brief because okay. I can talk for an hour on it. But, uh, okay. Uh, as you mentioned earlier um, in your introduction, my wife and I are both educators. And um, actually my last year at Carmel High School, that's a hot, it's actually the largest high school in the state of Indiana for four grades, um, north of Indianapolis. And uh, my last year there, my wife and I accompanied our high school band to Hawaii because every four years they do a major trip and they had some engagements there. Well, one of the engagements was at Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, as most people probably are familiar with Pearl Harbor, they know that the Arizona Memorial is there, of right. course, but now the battleship Missouri mm -hmm. is uh, overlooking the Arizona Memorial, kind of an interesting contrast, uh, beginning of the war, Pearl Harbor, and then the end of the war, Tokyo Bay, Battleship Missouri. The band was playing the national anthem at a flag raising ceremony that morning. I've heard the national anthem yeah. a thousand times or more in my uh, administrative years and so forth and uh, you know all these events. And it's moving, but I was never moved the way I was moved that morning. First of all, I was given the honor of doing the flag raising wow. ceremony at the Battleship Missouri overlooking the Arizona Memorial. And uh, even thinking back now on it, it-, it You're about it, to make me cry. I'm serious, it, yeah. it really moved me. I was crying mm -hmm. as I did that. And uh, well, anyway, the and bottom line is that's the beginning of what mm -hmm. started in my mind, the idea of sacrifice, even though I've thought about sacrifice so many times. Yeah, as Christians, certainly we read about it, teach it. Right. But I think any anyone who has been to the Vietnam Wall mm -hmm. or to Arlington, uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, they can identify with now to be there with a band and the you raising the flag that that's memorable. It was for sure. it was very moving. I I always <coughs> go to Normandy. You know, right. I hope someday I, that I can. Certainly. Well, your your book starts out with that story, and then you move to others through the years. I don't think we hear. That's why I think your book is so important right now. In our culture today, there are so many things that are literally breaking my heart. Sure. And um, we're into the really the me 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 type of thinking and and you should go to jail if you offend me <laughs> you know and all the politically Certainly. correct stuff and and I know that overall in our school system and I have a feeling yours might have been different but history is not being taught as it should we doing a lot of social engineering in our school and if you read American history you would a know there's so much sacrifice that got into making what we can do today. Sure, and, and I did. I taught history at the mm -hmm. high school level mm -hmm. immediately after I 
graduated from Butler. I went directly to the classroom, taught for 10 years in the classroom, and taught exactly these kinds of things. <clears throat> and they were important to me then. It's just uh, that particular that day in November of 2007 mm -hmm. when I did that ceremony, it just hit me differently and uh, I think changed my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it has. Uh, now people, most people will sacrifice for their family and uh, a lot of them for the nation. I, I try to make it a habit anytime I see someone in uniform to walk right up to them and, and say thank you. Yes, um, and, and interestingly enough, since writing this book, which has only been in the last six months to a mm -hmm. year that I've actually had the copies in hand and started doing this, but it's so interesting that I have met so many people in the service and some in, in civil roles too, police officers, Absolutely. Uh, obviously, you know, firemen, mm -hmm. paramedics, and those kind of people. But so many people who put their lives on the line every day. Mm -hmm. And just one little tidbit of an interesting story. Last summer, I was flying back with a group of guys from a, a golf trip, actually out to Nevada. But on our, <coughs> our airline flight back into Indianapolis, there was a group, probably at least a dozen, could have been as many as 18 soldiers mm -hmm. who were flying from uh, San Diego to Indianapolis and then onto the East Coast, but we're getting ready in the next two days to fly to Afghanistan. And they were in their fatigues and yeah. you couldn't help but know who they were. Mm -hmm. And just as we were landing, like just on our uh, descent, the pilot said, just want everybody to know, you know, we've got this certain group of soldiers are gonna be deployed to Afghanistan in the next two weeks. I mean, the plane erupted in applause. And I had a copy, one copy of my book. I just got it and uh, I had it with me and when we, left the plane, I went to the senior officer there, didn't know him, and I had written a note in there, soldier, mm -hmm. uh, just proud of what mm -hmm. you do for our country, thanks so much for your service, gave him that and said, you know, I hope you can read this and pass it on to some of your, your comrades. Uh, those kind of things have happened a lot since I've written this book. And yeah, and uh, the, the Second World War, you know, we welcome mm -hmm. the uh, service people coming home, and we do now, thank God, but there was a real blight on our history, I think, in the way the soldiers in the Vietnam War yes. were treated, um, that was terrible. And I, I, do, I do remember it. And uh, you write about a young girl mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. gravely injured in the Vietnam War, and her name was Kim, and you say Puck. Puck. Mm -hmm. Puck. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to my director, uh, Preston Jarvis, ahead of time, and I said, do you remember the Vietnam War? And he said, He's too young. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I want you to pull up a picture. Let's Google this girl's name. And um, he said, I remember the picture. Yes. This is a worldwide universal picture. Let's, uh, let's show them what Kim looked like. And um, no one could ever, ever forget that little naked girl running. And ha was it that uh, one of our uh, planes made a mistake and dropped napalm? Actually, the real story is it was not one <coughs> of our, it was a, one of our allies' planes, but it was actually a, a, a South Vietnamese pilot that entered, was dropping the bombs. It was an American pilot that was dropping the bombs. Mm -hmm. But napalm was, <laughs> it was very common mm -hmm. and very destructive. It's basically jellied gasoline. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hit this village and the photographer like an international news correspondent photographer was there and he just happened to be at the spot when little Kim, she probably wasn't eight or 10 years old, mm -hmm. was part of that tragedy and she's running down this grassy lane screaming because the gasoline, when it gets on your skin, you can't just wipe it off. It, it, it adheres, it was burning her. The, the, the photograph actually won uh, Pulitzer Prize, yes, I think, did. for uh, you know the videography of it and so forth. But uh, the reason I remember it so much is not because it was well known, but I had just graduated from Butler University. I mean, just the, that week. Mm -hmm. And that was on the front page. And you can't help but look at the picture and be impacted Absolutely. by it. Absolutely. And like I said, it's gone around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, let's fast forward. Kim is a Christian. Yes, she is. Let's mm -hmm. tell, tell us her story. Well, uh, in a nutshell, um, you know, she uh, was going back to Vietnam and uh, I shouldn't say she was going back, she was actually there and was going to Cuba <coughs> with some uh, medical training parts of her education. She stayed back in Vietnam for a number of years, had a number of surgeries, 
uh, because of, you know after we mm -hmm. left there basically it became communist and she was under the communist stronghold. Point is, uh, she ended up getting involved in a, in a medical school education, ended up going to Cuba with her husband that she had married, and uh, then they were going to be leaving Cuba after a, uh, like a honeymoon, in essence, and going back to Russia for some mm -hmm. further training. Well, the point is, they disembarked in Canada and made a shattering decision. We're not leaving here. We're not yeah. going to go back to that kind of environment, dictatorship and so forth. We're going to stay here in Canada. And Canada was, it was asylum. And, and Canada's very good that one. That's true. So anyway, they had a community there, actually, a Vietnamese community mm -hmm. they kind of got involved with. But the bottom line is she had become a Christian even while back in, in Vietnam mm -hmm. because she worked in a library. It's the first time she ever read, you know, the gospel. Now, she was speaking for something, and right. she said that she had forgiven, was it the pilot? Or? She had forgiven the pilot who dropped the bomb. Now this was in the United States. She had mm -hmm. been asked because she was well mm -hmm. known mm -hmm. and she had been asked to speak at this veterans ceremony and when she did there was a man in the audience who got up and said I'm the, I'm the man, I'm yeah. the man. Well Give he wasn't really the man uh -huh. but for some reason ghosts were haunting him and he did have a role in some mm -hmm. of the things that happened near that area where bombings took place and uh, you know guilt however you want to look at it he spoke up. Well, she said to him, I mean, she met him face to face and said to him, I forgive you, I forgive you. And, uh, you know, it's a moving thing because uh, she experienced a tragic, tragic thing. It's yet, very, yeah, it's very similar to Corey Ten Boom. Yes. When she came face to face with uh, one of the torturers, True. she was in a prison camp. And the truth is only Jesus can bring you to that point. Well, he was the best example as he hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what And of course, you've, you've mm -hmm. got Jesus in the book. <laughs> he's in there, believe me. Uh, he's the culmination of the book because uh, he can't help but read the last chapter and not know the gospel. I was, I was impressed with that. The very last page, it teaches people how to find the Lord. If you just tuned in, we do have the website up. I hope you've uh, made note of that and this uh, book that's just pretty brand new, on the subject of sacrifice. And uh, when you go to Sunday school and so forth, you, you hear the word, you hear it often, but not so much in our culture. True. And I hope that a lot of people will take advantage of it. Now, um, w I wanted to be sure that we covered Kim mm -hmm, and sure. of course Jesus. Now let's go back to um, some of the other things that I think would be very fresh in people's memories. I. I'm still just stunned watching on TV 9-11 mm -hmm. when those firemen and policemen, you could see them running into those buildings, yes. apparently with no thought for their life. And I interviewed one of them, a uh, fireman, precious, precious Christian man. And he was actually on sick leave. <laughs> he didn't have to go in. But when he saw what's happening on the TV, you know, he got dressed and he ran and, and, right. he, and I questioned him. I said, don't they have any, you know, any hesitancy? He said, no, they just go in and so many lost their lives. Well, obviously it's, it's their training mm -hmm. and that was probably one of the greatest tragedies in this country's history where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, police, no fire and so forth had to come together to respond, but it is their training. It's no different than our soldiers in the, in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, they're constantly putting their lives on the line, but it's all due to their training and, and they know how to, how to do that. Uh, but still, the sacrifice of those civil servants yes. during 9-11 is just uh, amazing. Uh, many, many stories are, are there in my book about even a father-son combination who both died that exact same day, mm -hmm. close to each other in the Twin Towers, but there's so many people uh, even civilians that pitched in and, and risked their lives um, trying to save others. Last fall, my daughter and I went to New York City for a couple of days and we went to Ground Zero. Mm -hmm. And I, they, it's, it's not, the museum's not finished yet. That's right. what I really want to see. But this was, it was sobering. And they had everybody's name engraved yes. in marble around these uh, reflection pools. Mm -hmm. So I found Todd Beamer. And I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to rub my hand on his, on his name there because wonderful, devoted Christian. Yes. And he'd been on the phone with someone I think he didn't even know, 
and they were quoting the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. and then he was heard to say, okay, let's roll. Let's roll. And yeah. they took that plane down and probably saved our White House. Exactly. Uh, or the Capitol building or both. Right. It was probably, the White House or Capitol were pro was probably the target of that plane. Trip. And you know what you've done here is so important. We can't forget those things. We cannot forget those things. Well, in your introduction earlier, you said something about our culture and the way it, mm. is, the way it has evolved, and, and mm -hmm. it is a narcissistic, uh, I'm first, mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't have to sacrifice, it's all about me, culture. And uh, that's certainly not what Christ taught. <laughs> no. And uh, it's not really a part mm -hmm. of our original culture mm -hmm. here in this country. I think our culture here in America is a culture of sacrifice, but we've slowly gotten away mm -hmm. from it. And it's a shame we have. I certainly hope not only my book, but just the whole idea of, of the teaching it of certainly needs. It certainly needs to be revived. Sure. And um, <clears throat> I hope, you know, maybe some pastors are listening or something that th this is a subject that needs to be uh, revisited all the time. And also, we cannot forget the Christians around the world right now. While people are, are busy, you know, watching their sports and playing with their technology, Christians around the world are dying because of the cause of Christ. Yes. And they're imprisoned. And it's... And our State Department could do a whole lot more Certainly. than it's doing and at least uh, put a spotlight on it. Yeah, we don't, we really don't think about it and we don't know enough about the Christians that are martyred around the world. If you go to a website, Daily. Voice of the Martyrs is a website. Voice of the Martyrs, Voice yes. Voice of the Martyrs. And the point is, I just read not too long ago, in a, in a normal year, there's probably between 150 and 200,000 Christians that die every year because of their faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they're mm -hmm. Christians they lose their lives. We don't think about that. And if uh, my viewers, if you think Christians are not being persecuted and there will be more of it right here in the United States, the home of the free, um, wake up. Yes. It, it is definitely happening. Thank you so much. I hope a lot of you took advantage of that website and uh, that you will get this book and and that if, if you teach Sunday school, you have, you have young kids in Sunday school. Uh, in your family altar and devotions, bring up that word sacrifice. Let them know what it means. Arkeline, could I interject at the back I've of the book? I've got 30 seconds, yeah. At the back of the book, there's a participant guide. And in that participant guide, it's laid out chapter by chapter with questions, research, and so forth that relates Indeed. Yes, to I the topics. I noticed that, yeah. And so I hope you'll take advantage and get this book. It's just full of really good things that be good for you to know, to remember, and to pass on. Sorry, we're out of time. But join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.